Okay, the biblical truth of our hymns. Today, beneath the cross of Jesus. Elizabeth Celia Selfheim. Between 18, the 18th of June, 1830, to the 19th of February of 1869. 39 years. She's a Scottish songwriter. And among her, 99 and beneath the cross of Jesus. Uh, it's focusing this hymn, the cross and the shelter of it. It was first published three years after the author's death in 1872 in Breathings on the Border. That was the title, Breathings on the Border. Uh, this poem it was in the Scottish Presbyterian magazine, The Family Treasure, and no one knows who submitted it. It wasn't her. We have no idea who put this hymn out for the Christians to enjoy. And it was not the writer, I mean, anonymous. So she didn't seek the glory to be, look at me, look what I can do. Somebody else grabbed this poem she wrote after she died and i gotta wonder when you get these these poems by fanny crosby and they are sung in churches and sung by christians i wonder if they hear in heaven i wonder if they know and the fact is if any of these this is a good hymn if any of these hymns were to bring somebody to Jesus Christ, the Bible said there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner. I repent and get right with God through Jesus Christ. And I wonder it would be a great amusement to the writer to say, hey, it was my hymn that did it again. And yet this woman, Miss Selfane Elizabeth, did not seek her own gratification, her own, it was like I said, after years after her death, somebody submitted it. We don't know no. Who? It's a comforting. It's about the cross. Torture. An instrument of torture. Where God laid out the entire world of sin from A to Z, and if there's any numbers of sin, laid out upon Jesus Christ where the sky became darkened. And Jesus cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, means my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The battered and bruised body, the torture. Now, originally five stanzas, I've got four. And some say this may be about her life. And the comfort that she had. She's had some tragedies. A brother who had re returned. Wayward. Gotten right with the Lord before his death. And that's where they say the 90 and 9s come from. But let me. Before we get to what the four I have. Let's get the this uh, stanza that's missing. I don't know if it's one, two, three, or four, or five. But oh, safe and happy shelter. Oh, refuge tried and sweet. Oh, trysting place. T-R-Y-S-T-I-N-G. Place. Where heaven's love. And heaven's justice meet. Right? You realize what that. That's one, two, three, four. That's four words. You realize every harm that we have done to somebody, whether we know it or not, every time we open up our mouth and offended somebody or did somebody harm, they say sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you. That's that's a lie. I know people who have been abused by words and words only. They weren't beaten or scolded. They were scolded. But imagine heaven's justice meet that one day when we all get to the judgment, Saved or lost. The judgment seat of Christ for those that are saved and the great white throne judgment for them that are lost. 
where you've been falsely charged for a crime that you did not commit, and the guilty party will meet the sentence. But, oh, what about the guilty crimes that you did get? I mean, excuse me. What about the guilty crimes that you did not get? Oh, they'll come forth and find you guilty unless they're the, under the blood of Jesus Christ. If thou shalt confess thy sins, and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. All the times that we took glory and we didn't deserve it. All the times we didn't take the glory. Heavenly reward. Let me continue. As to the exiled patriarch, that wondrous dream was given. So seems my Savior's cross to me, a ladder up to heaven. Now, I'm not going to tell you, the copyright, I'm not going to tell you what my hymnal is. Okay, but we're over 100. We're over 150. I'm not even going to give you the number. We're between 150 and 190. If I give you the number, you're like, oh, this is, so I'm not going to give you the number. And I've skipped many hymns. Hymns I don't know, hymns are not even worthy. And we've done hymns where we found out that they are scripturally wrong. We have found hymns that devoted to a religion and not to Jesus Christ. We have found scriptures that don't match the Bible. And you mean to tell me we could not get rid of those hymns out, out of this hymnal and make room for this one stance? There are hymns that, you know, you got to continue to the next page. I think personally that you can get rid of the battle hymn of Republic and give me the fifth stanza beneath the cross of Jesus. And we've already did the battle hymn of Republic and I'm protected by, you know, by the copyright where fair, fair use. Uh, it's it's in, instruction. It's education. But... This hymn is, you know, in religious, so uh, sung during Lent and Holy Week. That's Catholic. But there is no specific time to remember about the Lord. When you look at the Lord's Supper and it says, remember the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we look forward to him returning. And there is no cause when Paul writes that, you know, you got to do it on every Sunday. You can. That's no problem. You can do it every day if you want. You can do it every week, every month, every year. Three times a year, four times a year. Every month that begins with a T. Every day that begins with a W. I, I, there's, there's no for the Lord's Supper. And yet every day in our heart we should, we should look to the gospel. And we're going to see the gospel here. And the gospel that we're to proclaim, the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died. We're going to see that in this hymn, according to the scriptures. And in this hymn is scriptures. And he was buried. We're going to see the burial. And then again, the third day, he rose from the grave, according to the scripture. We're going to see that here. This hymn, by this woman, has done what Mark 16 says, going all the world and preach the gospel. But she didn't even know that this hymn, this poem she wrote, was going to go out, well, how many years did I say after her death? Um, oh, forgive me. I'm trying to see where it said how many years after. No. Oh, it was published. It was Okay, yes, three years after the author's death, it was published, 1872. She had no idea that this poem she wrote to the glorification of her Savior and God was going to go Mark 16 all the world and preach the gospel. And when it's sung in a hymn again, we, we get three types of people in a church today. They love the Lord, they're saved, they know they're saved, and they're serving the Lord the best of their ability. They're great, who, who are saved, they don't do, you know, they're just saved. They go to church to please God. They're worldly. And then they're just unsaved people in church. 
Now, directed to the unsaved people in the church, the song leaders say, listen, listen to the melody. Read the words instead of sing them. See the insight of our Savior's suffering upon the what the cross is all about. Read the words and listen to the excitement of those that love the Lord. Now remember, this hymn is written for an individual by a poem. It was never in her heart for a congregation to sing. So when you read and sing this hymn, you are reading the heart of Miss Selfane. And I, I, I deeply apologize if I'm saying that name wrong. In the honor of this woman who's saved in glory today. I deeply apologize. She's going to get a new name anyway, as I will get a new name. So let's look at the words. And forgive me, if, I mean, this, this hymn, when it cries out, you want to sing it. And I don't want to torture your ears. Beneath the cross of Jesus. You know, there were three crosses that day. There was a thief that never repented. All the world goes that way. That thief that was unrepentant went the broad way that goes to destruction. Many goes the way of the cross of the thief. That's sorry. There was a thief, there was a thief on the other side of Jesus who repented. And there are many people who have repented. And gone to the wrong cross in repentance. They didn't go to the cross of Jesus for repentance. You know, I went to my mother and I got things right. Went to my dad, I got things right. Went to my children, got things right. Well, whatever you got right, old school teachers, whatever it is. Well, they may forgive you, but your sins can't be forgotten by them. I have a person right now, I said, listen, I forgive you. I, you repented truly to me. But it's hard to say unless medical condition of my brain, I can't forget. And it's sorry. It's very sorry. But so, listen, I'm not saying that that other thief did not get saved. That He got saved. But there is a way that people go that, oh, if I go get right with other men, if I get right, if I save the animal, if I save the whale. I'm going to get into heaven. If I love dogs, I'm going to go to an all dog go to heaven. But that's wrong. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And yet the Bible says Saul repented many times, but he didn't repent with the proper heart and to the right. He repented to Saul. Oh, excuse me, he rep repented to Samuel. He didn't repent to God. So beneath the cross of Jesus, when you come to Jesus' cross, when you come to Jesus' sufferings, not Mary, she didn't have a cross. The Pope didn't have a cross. Your pastor, your, your preacher, your rabbi, your priest, whatever, your guru, your prophet, whatever. Did not die upon that cross that was prophesied that Jesus Christ would die because the Bible says he died according to the scriptures. That thief that did not repent, he, he did a scripture. The wages of sin is death, but he never received the gift. The other thief, he, wages of sin is death. But he received the gift of God, which is Jesus Christ. But he's not able to save your soul. I'm not able to save no one. And yet I came to the cross of Jesus and got saved. Glory to God. I fain would take my stand. And fain, they got a note here, means willingly. I came to the cross of Jesus not because of my grandmother. And I say that because my grandma. The, the year I got saved, 1987. I don't know how long was before April, but you know, come to church, come to church, come to church, come to church. I was like, no, 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 no. To me, it was Catholic, boring, stupid. 
Finally, just to shut her up. I went on a Sunday uh, on a Sunday morning. I went to shut my grandmother up. And I heard the gospel presented to me. And upon the gospel being said to me, and hearing the word of God, and then seeking a man that can open a Bible and show me the way that I got saved. I went to church on a Sunday because, you know, this is shut my grandma up. On the next Saturday, April 25th, I've been saying 21st, it's wrong, 25th, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I willingly came to Jesus Christ as a sinner. My grandma didn't get me saved. She, she got me to church. But I could have walked out of that church lost for the rest of the time of my life. But I came beneath the cross of Jesus, and that is where my stand. And she teaches a wonderful thing here, standing in state. My stand is in Christ. I am a son of God. I can't lose that. I cannot lose my salvation. It's not mine. The standing is in Christ. But my state, that's a different story. Now, in the United States, we have 50 states, and there's all kinds of them. Each state has its attitude, its people, its ways, its customs. California, far liberal, right, uh, and all that, left. Weird state. Taxation of the, you know, the state of Connecticut, where I once lived. The hustle and bustle of New York. The multicultural Florida, where everybody's down here from every state. The farmland states, the... You know, the wet states, the cold states. And that's my state is one day I'm good, next minute I'm bad. My state is the eyes of the Lord are on every place behind the evil and the good. The evil and the good is my state. <laughs> but my stand is in Christ through the cross. And only by the cross of Jesus. There are people, that, that this, this is their Easter weekend we just passed. It's dark. And there are people who were nailed to crosses all around the world, tied to crosses. There are people who walk the streets of America carrying a cross. That's not the cross of salvation. That's the cross of works. The shadow of the mighty rock. I'm surprised that's not capitalized. Because I can run the rock to Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, and I can run to the scriptures in Corinthians where Paul says that rock is was Christ. Now, I wonder if that is an error by the printers of the book. Because I would assume by, by the scriptural context of this hymn, I would assume that, might, that mighty rock that she spoke about would be Jesus Christ, and that would be a capital R. The hymn says little r. I think the hymnal's wrong. I believe this woman relied on the cross of Jesus and the rock, the water of life, that sustained the children of Israel in the wilderness. Now, I don't know how it happened, but the, Paul says that rock followed them. Maybe get to heaven and we'll find out, but I, that's all I'm going to go on that one. The mighty rock in a weary land. Oh, life is wonderful. I read the bumper stickers. Life is good, I see, in the back of the spare tires of Jeeps. <laughs> Imagine putting a, life is good on the spare tire. Now, I think is life really good? It's raining in the middle of the night and you got a flat tire, you got to change that thing? I mean, is it really good? I'm going through right now. My wife's in the hospital right now. Went in for a dog bite to find out, you know, with previous medical issues she's had before in medicine. She's got a bad heart, bad lungs, and bad kidneys. They're doing tests right now. So where is the land? I've had a wife die in my arms for breast cancer. I have been diagnosed with uh, diabetes and my fault. Right now I'm up to because my family had diabetes. And I got neuropathy. My feet are going numb. It's severe. My hands are starting to go numb. I'm wearing glasses. I'm achy, I'm sore. Previous injuries in my lifetime are coming up to me. I got bills that are not paid yet. I mean, as far as the utility bills are paid, but you know, there are, I had to get a, a, a 
mechanic credit card, you know, for the car to be fixed. That's not paid off. I got a couple of credit cards because of sin and pleasure. They're not paid off. I got other bills that come up. I got medical bills. I get up. I don't feel good sometimes. I feel sick. I'm throwing up. Cough. I haven't felt well. Been in the hospital myself many times. Surgeries. Been over. I've been on both sides of the hospital. Been in both of them. Not pleasant at all. I've gotten up. We've got we got several ministries. Our family takes part. And I've gotten up. This tires anything. Hold for God. Give me strength. I've gotten updates. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Ready to go. With our ministry, I've had people hate us. Had people love us. I've had the police called on me. I have to deal with the police several times. I've had several times where they've gotten in my face, and gotten my wife's face, and gotten my daughter's face. My son's going through times right now. It's a weary land. A home within the wilderness. Wilderness, wilderness produces nothing. There's nothing there. When the children of Israel walked the wilderness for 40 years, they didn't stop and plant anything. They had to have been given manna. Wilderness produces no fruit. And yet every time in our life, we got to have our wilderness as much as our mountaintop. Wilderness can be valleys. Valleys can be even lower than wilderness. This woman is not only speaking about Christ on the cross and our salvation in the gospel. She's speaking about the Christian life as a saved woman. And she said, it's not all wonderful. You could not sell this woman a prosperity gospel. As you'll find on radio and television and media bookstores ministry and YouTube ministries out there too. Listen, I make sure when I preach the gospel public, I, I, there's times I say, listen, if you get saved, it's not going to heal your cancer. It's not going to give you good health. Now, when we die and go to glory, Revelation 20, 21, and 22, we'll get a brand new body. They'll never you know, have tears, no more sorrows, no more death, no more sin. But getting saved does not end sin. Getting saved does not end... It may, maybe miraculously, God will take care of things. Maybe, maybe not. I still have sins that I've done since before I was saved, and I'm, bug, I'm bugging out on them. And I've had sins like smoking where it took me a few years, but I quit it. It took me a few years, but I stopped drinking. To the glory of God. But oh, how weary. A home in the wilderness, a rest upon the way. That's Pilgrim. He's going up and he comes to that pavilion. And it's a wonderful place. It's an orchard. It's nice. It smells good. It's peaceful. It was so peaceful, he lay down and slept and lost his evidence. And he got forward, and he had to come back and find it and lost time. And got to the college or the cottage or the inn or the house at late night. From the burning of the noontime heat. Oh, it's so hot out there. I live in Florida, but that, that's not the heat it's talking about. When the fire of life is on. <laughs> And you're cooking and you're boiling. You jump from out of the pan and into the fire. Problems, situations, troubles. And the burden of the day. Now what is that? What is the troubles? What is the weariness? What is the, the wilderness? Get beneath the cross of Jesus. You know, there's only one disciple that was below, beneath the cross of Jesus. That was John. John has given us the gospel of John, a wonderful gospel of all four. John has given the first, second, third John. And he's given us a magnificent book, which is overly loved, is the book of Revelation. He was the beloved apostle. And he's the one that got under the blood, under the cross. And he, I mean, he was boiled in oil and put in the island of Platinum. But he's the only apostle of 
chapter 12, Paul, that did not suffer a tragic death. Even including Judas went and hung himself and body ripped open. In life's troubles and problems, I what I say is go back to Bethel, where Jacob met the Lord, came up to the Lord. Go back to where you're saying, and you don't have to do it physically. Right now, my Bethel's gone. Within a few months or years, I don't know what's going to happen to the place where I got saved. But I can spiritually go back to Bethel. I can go back to that cross where Jesus Christ and I met. And where I received Christ as my Savior. Where that Lamb of God became my gift of God. All life's troubles. I spent the last few nights, you know, sleeping, just reaching out to God. Help. 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 There lies beneath its shadow. But on the further side, the darkness of an awful grave that gapes both deep and wide. And there between us stands the cross. You know where you're going to go? You were born to die. Think about it. I don't care if you live under a bridge or live out in the bushes in a tent or no tent. I don't care if you, you go to the highest skyscrapers or the biggest cities and the most expensive penthouse. I don't care if you get the, 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 the lowest, meanest, garbage job you can get or get the CEO of the world. You were born to die. And when they put it on your grave marker, my name is on a grave marker, got the year, the date I was born. It's waiting for the date for me to die. My wife has the date she was born. It's the year is wrong. I got that messed up. And then it's got the, the year she died, the date she died, September 10th, 2010. But I could not put, I could not have them put in between those dates, the years, the dates we got born again, the new birth. Me, it's April 25th, 1987. But what stood before the day I was delivered in the hospital and wherever I die is Calvary's cross. Wherever you were born and wherever you're going to die, there is, during the church age, there is a Calvary's cross of you meeting God and Jesus. Our whole life follows that unrepentant thief. Going the broad way, which leads to destruction. And there have been times we've gone to the other thief and gotten things right with others. But there are times when we, between, when we're looking forward to going to death, and maybe we don't look forward to death, but you do buy life insurance, so you're looking forward to death, the cross gets in the way before you die. How far after you're born or how far before you die, it's up to God. But when I was 18 years old, on April 25th, 1987, the cross of Jesus Christ came right before me. In the King James 1611 Bible. I haven't died yet. I don't know when I'm going to die. But at that point, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now I'm going the way of heaven. I'm the, going the way of glory. And I'm going away maybe the rapture. Whether I, whether I die or not, I'm going, to, I'm going to hit the rapture. And those who come to the cross of, of Christ and go the other way, reject Jesus Christ and the gospel that he suffered and died according to scripture will go the way of, re of destruction and follow that unrepentant thief into hell two arms outstretched to save that's jesus he was nailed one arm and he laid his arms his, his hands down he had them he allowed them to nail his hands to that cross he didn't fight he didn't call for a lawyer he willingly laid his life down to be that lamb of god which take away the sin of the world And 
and those nails that went through his hands and his feet and the spear that went through the side and maybe the marks of that crown that was placed on his head maybe those marks are still there in his body they're still there and they're going to be there for all eternity he's willing and wanting to save you god's not willing that any should perish but that all all he wants all but he's a holy and righteous god he can't have all sinners want all to go to heaven but in reality if you just sit them down they're all go to heaven they would classify as some they don't want god's willing that all to be saved but if you don't want to do it through the way the truth and the life you're not going to get saved like a watchman set to guard the way from that eternal grave jesus christ sits as a guard between you and death stop don't go any further I've got a message for you halt and there are too many that comes up to the guard of jesus christ blocking the way of death and hell they said get away from me i'll go another way i'll find another way around that's a shame. That's a shame. Upon the cross of Jesus, my eyes at times can see the very dying form of one capital O who suffered there for me. Like I said, I think that rock should have been capitalized. I like to see the original poem. Have you ever taken time out of your schedule and thought about that bleeding, massy, pussy, black and blue, ripped open, scarred, abused, tragic body of Jesus Christ? You ever thought about the pains that he suffered? I do. I find it appalling. That that was the only way that God could save my soul. The cat of nine tails. The pulling of his beard. The smashing of their fists against his face. The crown of thorns. The nail. And I can't even sit in a dentist chair and have the Novocaine wear out. And he's pulling a tube and I grab his face. And I'm ready to take them down to the ground. You pull my beard, you're not going to get a good reaction. I've had it pulled by accident. Even I've done it with a, with a comb or something. You've got to get back to what Christ suffered for you. And get off what OR suffering. Now, she started to think, you know, this weary land, but look at what Christ went through. Where were them that Jesus fed at the cross? Where was them that had leper and leprosy and doesn't have leprosy no more? Where were the ones that were unable to move a body part, appendage, and now able to move? Did the blind that now receive sight saw Christ on the cross? The ones that were deaf, did they hear the Eli, Eli, Lama Sevectini? It says Jesus' mother and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and the other women were there. It said John was there. Peter got so angry and, and repentful, he left. Judas remorse went and hung himself. But Christian, when we take part of the Lord's Supper, and that's the sin of the Mass, because the Mass doesn't think about the death, burial, and resurrection, and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That Lord's Supper is making us think about the tragic results that Christ had to suffer for our sins, and he's coming back, and when he's coming back, the scars are not gone. They're still there. And from my stricken heart, 
with tears. You ever, had, you ever been heartbroken? You ever been in tears because of what Christ has done for you? Has it ever broken your heart? It broke his. Two wonders I confess. The wonders of the redeeming love. That's one. Christ redeemed us. And the price was God's blood, Acts 20, 28. The price was suffering and dying on that cross. Satan is so cruel, he says, okay, you want to buy them back from me? You better suffer and you better die and you better come out of that grave. That's the only way I'm going to release them. And you better beat the crap out of Jesus while you're doing it. You may not like that, but that's what they did. It's a wonder that God redeemed me because I'm not faithful to him on this side of Calvary. In thoughts and in actions, I'm a miserable sinner. And like she goes next, the second one, my unworthiness. I deserve hell even today. I deserve it. Christ should have just stayed on the throne and just have the angels and seraphims and Worship him and God forever. No, he came down. He suffered and died for me. You better take time to reflect back to that day. The day you got saved and the day he was crucified. I take, O cross, thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Oh, let me win the lottery. Let me get married. Let me be the president of this company. Lord, let me have a new car. Let me have a good house. Lord, let me have, let me have, let me have. Our, pray, our prayers, give me, give me, give me, give me. You know what her prayer was? She wanted to see Jesus' face. She did. When she died, she became absent from the body and present with the Lord. I can't even fathom what that's going to be like. I can't fathom two things. If a Christian dies before the rapture, what is it going to be like from where he died and there he's looking at Christ? Or what about the rapture? Here you are, you're walking, you're riding a car, somewhere where you're going, and the next thing you're in the clouds with all savers, no lost people. And then the next step you see Jesus. It's going to be remarkable. I mean, I love my wife. I love my children. I love my mom. I want to see Jesus. My wife right now, I'm praying that we get together, stay together, healthy, so we can go and tell other people. She's great. I mean, she's getting gospel tracts out like crazy in the hospital. But... You ought to want to see his face. She wants to see his face. She's ready. I'm not. But I'm ready to see Jesus. She's not ready for me to see Jesus. <laughs> we all want the rat. Well, I shouldn't say we all. There we go. Content to let the content means, oh well, this is what the Lord has. This is what the Lord has. He wants me in a rented house, okay. Wants me in a used car, okay. Wants me in a terrible job, uh, supposed to be okay. Content to let the world go by, let the world go by, but, 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 but. With this hymn here, we're to preach to the world the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're trying to stop them from going to hell. Remember we talked about the guard of the cross? That's us. We're to guard the world to say, hey, if you keep on going the way you're going, you're going to hell. Now what you do with that, but we're here to stop you. We're here to tell you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing after nothing after nothing, anything can save your soul but the belief in the cross and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. 
other than that, I mean, if you don't want to have the Lord in your life, bye. My family's left me. My unsaved family. That's okay. I'm in a Christian family. You know what? They think I'm overzealous. They think I, you know, whatever, crazy, whatever that. But I am on the Bible. I am on doing right, even though I am a sinner. I'm doing what the Bible tries to tell. I'm trying to do what the Bible tells me to do. And to them, they may, I may seem fanatic, but I'm not fanatic. No. And if you don't want to learn of the Lord, I've had many people, I, people got saved on, you know, with me guiding to the Lord and they walk such a walk that, you know, okay, well, go. You want the zeal to keep going, keep growing, let's go. But if you want to fall back, I'll try to pick you up, but I ain't going to fall with you. I don't have a domino Christian. You want to fall? Go. I'll, I'll help you up. But if you want to keep falling, keep falling. Bye. See you. To know no gain or loss. You follow Christ, there is no loss. There's gain. In the world, there's gain and loss. As you stab someone's back to get where you want to go, somebody's going to stab your back to get where they want to be. As you make enemies, you have become an enemy in the world. You may be happy to reach where you've reached. Somebody is unhappy because they have not reached where you reach, and they want it. And when we all get the glory, get to heaven, it'll be all one thing, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Rejoicing, gl glory, great things. My sinful self, yep, look at that. She's not exalting herself at all. She's exalting what Christ has done for her sins. My only shame. Miss Selfane, again, if I pronounce her name wrong, I, I deeply apologize. If I could ask you one thing that you've ever been shameful in your life about, my sins against God. You mean you've never been embarrassed? In, oh, I've been embarrassed in public. I've done, we all do stupid things. He says, the shameful thing of me is I'm a sin. I'm a sinner. And my glory of the cross. She says, I am ashamed of my sins, but I am saved. I am a saved sinner. Glory to God. Let me ask you something. What was the last time your church sang beneath the cross of Jesus? When was the last time your eyes cried because of what Jesus Christ has done for you? When was the last time you reflected back to that afternoon, that morning, from the time that night, that, the time he was arrested in the garden, in the morning he stood before the Sanhedrin, and then standing before Pilate, and the people that just a week before say, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they're crying, crucify him, crucify him. And he's in agony on that cross. Oh, if God, if he's really of God, let God come down and take him. High card gets gets his clothes. Snake eyes gets his clothes. Give him some vinegar instead of water. Have you forgotten about Calvary? Get back there. I'm not saying do not say I'm saying get saved again. I am not saying that. Once saved, always saved. But have you gotten back to where Christ suffered and died for you? Have you reflected on that morning, that afternoon, that night that you received Christ? See, when we sin, when I sin, that moment I sin is I've taken my eyes off Jesus and put, my, put myself or the world on target. 
You see, if we kept, if I kept my eyes on Jesus all the time, I would not sin. I'm not going to sin in glory. Why? My eyes are always on him. There's no more world. Now, I'm not saying get saved again, but I'm saying go back to Bethel. Go back to Calvary. And just sit down there and have some great fellowship with the suffering, dying Messiah, Jesus Christ. 